Hi, my name is Lauren Young. I am the Digital Marketing Specialist here at The Forest, and I'm here to talk to you about um, my family's experience with a pretty significant life-altering event. So in 2015, that September, I took my 15-month-old son, Jeremy, to his well-child checkup, and I had some concerns about his stomach. Um, nothing was really wrong from what I could tell. He didn't have any weird symptoms, but his stomach had been getting larger over that summer. And I was a little concerned about why that might be. And from my point of view as a parent, I thought maybe I was overfeeding him, maybe my husband was overfeeding him. So at the end of the appointment, everything looked great. And the doctor said, is there anything you wanna share as far as concerns go? And I just said, do you mind just looking at his stomach? Let me know if there's anything to be worried about. So she felt his stomach. She talked to me about his diet and she said, you know, I don't see anything wrong, but I don't ever want to ignore a mother's intuition. So what I want you to do is come back in a month and we will reevaluate him and see if there's anything that's changed. So we came back October 21st and his stomach looked a little bit bigger and she felt his stomach and he screamed in pain. Um, I had never heard him make that sound before. And she kind of made some strange faces as she's feeling around his belly and she said, you know, I don't want to scare you, but let me go get a, a more seasoned doctor to check his stomach because I think I feel something and it doesn't feel normal, so I'll be right back. So she went and grabbed an older doctor who'd been there for many, many years and he felt around Jeremy's stomach and he screamed out again, Jeremy did, and he had tears just rolling out of his eyes. And we didn't know what was going on, but the doctor said, you know, based on the area that it's in, we think maybe he has some impacted stool and maybe we can just take him for some x-rays tonight and see if there's anything we need to do for him. So from the pediatrician, we were sent immediately across the street to an outpatient clinic. We were in Cincinnati, Ohio at the time. So this was an outpatient clinic for Cincinnati Children's Hospital. And they ran x-rays that night and they told us that the radiologist or the pediatrician would call us later on to let us know if there was anything strange on the x-ray. So at about 10, 30, 11 o'clock that night, I was taking a shower and my husband uh, grabbed my phone because it started ringing and he answered it. And I stuck my head out of the shower and I looked at him and his face just dropped. And when he got off the phone, he said, they see a really strange thing on the x-ray. They don't know what it is, but they use the word mass. And my heart dropped. Um, but he said, they want us to come to Cincinnati Children's Hospital tomorrow to get Jeremy an x-ray. Not x-ray, sorry, an uh, ultrasound to get a better picture of what it is that is going on. So the next day, um, I went to work and I waited to get in touch with Children's Hospital once they got the doctor's orders. And I went and picked up Jeremy early from daycare and um, Mark and I headed over with him to Children's Hospital and he had an ultrasound done. And ultrasounds don't generally take that long, not from my experience. Um, I've now had two children and they, the ultrasounds are pretty quick. But for Jeremy, we were in there probably an hour and a half. And they, we had two different radiologists come in there and, and check out his belly. And we had a tech come in and say, uh, what is Jeremy's favorite thing to watch on TV? Does he have a favorite movie? And at the time, he really loved Curious George. So we told them Curious George. And they brought in a movie that was about an hour and a half long and put it on and we just sat there and sat there and Jeremy was fine. He was watching his favorite little cartoon character. But Mark and I were looking at each other and looking at the clock thinking, why are we still here? What are we waiting on? And a little while later, uh, a doctor came in and asked us, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Young, why do you think you're here at the hospital today? And we said, well, our pediatrician and the radiologist that checked the x-ray said they thought maybe Jeremy had impacted stool and we were coming here to confirm that. And the radiologist's face dropped and he said, unfortunately, it's not stool, but we don't know what it is. What we do know is that whatever this mass is, is outside of all of Jeremy's organs. It is down near the base of his spine and it's about the size of a softball. And 
we didn't know what was going on. A woman had followed the doctor into the room and she was holding a folder and some uh, pens for us. And she handed me all of this stuff and there were um, pieces of lined notebook paper inside this folder and she said, here, I want you to take this notebook paper and these pens, you're gonna need them. You're gonna hear a lot of names and a lot of terms you don't understand in the next little bit. I want you to take notes. And then she handed me a pack of tissues and she said, you may need this as well. The doctor said, um, I want you to follow this woman down the hall. That was what he said, down the hall. Um, and we're gonna talk to you a little bit more. Please don't be surprised if you're admitted tonight. Well, Jeremy had had uh, some raspberries in the waiting room. We were waiting to have the ultrasound, and so I guess they wanted to do further scans to see what this mass was. They wanted to do an MRI of his belly, and that would require him to have fasted for a while. Well, he hadn't fasted, and so, of course, admission was a possibility. We followed the woman down the hall, and down the hall was to the Cancer and Blood Diseases Institute. At this point, I see that sign on the wall and I turn around and I look at my husband and I have tears just pouring out of my eyes and I say, what is wrong with my baby? Because they hadn't told us anything. They said, we know it's not impacted stool, but we don't know what it is. So from here, we are sitting in a waiting room. At this point, it is late in the day. All of the clinics inside the hospital have started to close. So people are clearing out, but they bring us back with Jeremy and we are put in this little room, this little exam room, and it's dark. And I remember we had maybe three or four people come in the room. I learned that one is an oncologist, a pediatric oncologist. We have his oncology fellow with him. We have a social worker, and then we have a case manager who was a nurse um, by profession. And these people, I should say the social worker and the case manager, get to work keeping Jeremy occupied. They're giving him snacks like goldfish and apple juice while the two doctors speak with us. And they say, we still don't know what this mass is. However, all of the markers on the ultrasound and the location and just the behavior of what has happened with his stomach growing over time, we think this may be something called neuroblastoma. We don't expect you to be able to, to pronounce that right now or for the next little bit, but you're gonna learn that word and we're going to run the tests after Jeremy's had some time to kind of clear out his stomach overnight. Uh, we're gonna run those tests tomorrow. We're gonna do an MRI, and we're gonna see if this is possibly cancer. So I, of course, burst into tears all over again. I can't imagine, this is my only child at this point. He's 16 months old now, and here we are finding out he could have cancer. And immediately I'm thinking, is he going to survive this? Is he going to die? What's going to happen? So we were indeed admitted that night, and um, it was just the most surreal experience. That night it was like Mark and I didn't have words for what was going on. Jeremy, of course, didn't understand what was happening. Everything was fine. He had mom and dad there, and we were keeping him safe. Um, the next day, they took us back, and I'm going to show you a picture. They took us back, and this is a picture of Jeremy um, sitting on a little stretcher, getting ready to have his MRI, just to show you how tiny he was. Just a little guy, 16 months old, still has a pacifier, and honestly, at that point, it broke my heart that there was a hospital gown for a child that small. It just didn't make any sense to me. Um, but they took him back, and they did the MRI, and they also ran a CT of his brain, but that was because he kept hitting himself on the head and, and we were worried there was something else going on. But that CT ended up being negative. There was nothing wrong with his brain. Uh, but the MRI showed what the real story was. And we had to wait and wait and wait. We, once Jeremy was back in the room, it was a hurry up and wait game. It was, we just sat around waiting for the answer to whatever this MRI was gonna show. About, I don't know, 10 o'clock, 10.30 that night, the oncology fellow came into the room and she delivered news that I will never forget and it completely altered our lives for the rest of our lives. Um, she told us that Jeremy indeed has neuroblastoma, 
They don't know uh, what kind of neuroblastoma because with that kind of cancer, instead of doing stages like stage one through four, they do risk levels. So they have low risk, intermediate, and high risk. Um, and so they had to still do some more tests to figure out what was, like what kind of risk level this was. And so that would determine his prognosis and everything else we did with his treatment. I remember as the diagnosis was presented to me, I heard what she was saying, but I didn't. Everything in my world just stopped. I, I completely just tuned her out. I remember just sitting there staring off into space and thinking, not my baby, not my baby. This, this isn't happening to me. Just the world stopped turning. Um, the next day, Jeremy went in for a long battery of tests. He was not in his room for most of the day. Uh, he had a bone marrow biopsy, he had a tumor biopsy, and he had something called a central line, which is kind of like a pick line um, placed inside of his chest. So he was in surgery for a good chunk of the day. Um, the central line would help them, the doctors and nurses, pump chemo into his bloodstream and also draw any blood that they needed for any additional tests throughout his treatment. We met with the doctor uh, that weekend and we learned that Jeremy was considered intermediate risk, uh, meaning that some of the cancer had spread a little bit. So he had cancer in the bone marrow of his spine as well as that big softball sized tumor, which was about 11 centimeters in diameter. Um, so you can imagine why his belly was growing so large. He was a little tiny toddler with a mass this big in his abdomen. I mean, it's huge. I saw pictures of it after they removed it later on. Um, so I never left Jeremy's side through all of this. Um, I was working full time in Cincinnati at Job and Family Services. Uh, I was a manager of a unit there and I left uh, temporarily. I went on family medical leave and I remember my supervisor stopped by the hospital to visit us and she said, Lauren, I think you should at least work part-time. Like, we'll work with you, you can work from home, you can work in the office some, but I think you should still work. I think she was worried about the financial side of this. And I told her, I said, God's gonna work this out. It's gonna be fine. Something is gonna work out and it's gonna be okay. And to tell you the truth, like God came through in ways that I can't even explain. Um, for the entire five months that Jeremy was in treatment, I got a full or partial paycheck every single pay period because my coworkers donated their vacation time to us. I, I had money throughout the entire ordeal. We had people coming out of the woodwork taking care of us. We had uh, diapers from the beginning to the very end. We never bought a pack of diapers. We had people buying us groceries. They provided all of our Christmas presents because we were so worried we wouldn't be able to afford Christmas for ourselves or for Jeremy. But I remember coming into the living room at Christmas time and there were presents all over my living room because Jeremy's daycare had adopted our family, put us on their Christmas tree in the lobby and everybody went crazy buying gifts for us and for Jeremy. Um, but it was such an odd time of life. I remember my husband was in school at the University of Cincinnati and he was you know, doing internships and whatnot. I, I remember just being in the hospital, living in this really weird world where I'd fall asleep to the sounds of Jeremy's monitors beeping and there was no sleep because doctors and nurses were frequently checking on him throughout the night and it would constantly wake me up. Or he might be getting sick from his various medicines, just the chemos they were pumping in were making him very sick. He would be throwing up throughout the night and it was just a strange, strange time. Um, and through it all, people just continued to be there for us. I remember there was this fantastic organization that we discovered through all this called the Dragonfly Foundation. Um, and as you can see, I'm wearing a dragonfly. I'm a very big fan of them. Um, the Dragonfly Foundation is an organization in Cincinnati that provides um, support for families who are going through pediatric cancer and bone marrow transplants and things of that nature. They give the children gifts, they provide all kinds of events for the families to enjoy, um, where they really look out for the well-being of the family, the safety of the children going through treatment. And 
the way we discovered them is our social worker brought a big bag of stuff to the hospital just full of things that we would need like deodorant, body wash, um, paper towels, things that we would have never thought to bring to the hospital. Because to tell you the truth, the day that we went in for the ultrasound, I left my purse in the car. I thought, we're going to go in, get the scan, come back in like 30 minutes to an hour and we'll be done. I didn't think I was going to be in the hospital for the next week. That's exactly what happened. We were, we were admitted and we were there for a week. But Jeremy went through six rounds of chemo over the next five months. And in January of 2016, he went through a six hour resection surgery where they cut open his stomach. He had a, an incision about this long around his belly and they took out as much of the tumor as they could. He had already been through several rounds of chemo at this point, but um, they took what they could, but there was still a lot kind of growing into his spine. So they didn't want to mess with that. That would have been too risky to, to do. Um, but after the surgery, um, I'm going to show you a picture of, of him. This is him after the surgery. Um, by this point, most of his hair had fallen out and we had shaved off the rest. He was very, very weak and in a lot of pain after this surgery. Um, it, was, it was a really, really hard time. He actually stopped eating and he lost a lot of weight. And so there were concerns about his nutrition and all that weight loss. So they ended up putting in a feeding tube through his nose and um, we just had a lot of complications. Um, he had to have a catheter because he wasn't properly emptying his bladder. Um, just all kinds of things going wrong. And, um, but, the, but Cincinnati Children's Hospital took really, really good care of us. I mean, it was, it was just unbelievable how, how good those people were to us. Um, Jeremy had his last day of treatment in February 2016, and the following month, on March 23rd, he had his first set of scans post-treatment. And it's crazy because October 23rd was the day of his diagnosis. March 23rd was the last day of treatment. It was five months to the day, and those scans showed no evidence that the cancer was still alive. Yes, there was a little bit of tumor left, and there always will be because there's so much that grew into his spine that we can't mess with, but it's all dead tissue. And ever since then, we've gone back every year uh, in the beginning, every three months to get scans for him. But then it started to six months and then now it's every year we go back to make sure the cancer hasn't come back because there is a very slight chance of recurrence. Uh, this is a fairly rare type of cancer. Um, if you Google it, it says very rare on the screen. I think it's, just a very, very limited number of children are affected by this every year in the United States. But the chances of recurrence are rare, yet if Jeremy got this rare kind of cancer, you know, it's worth checking to make sure this isn't going to come back. Um, Jeremy is now a happy, healthy five-year-old. He is supposed to be in kindergarten right now, but obviously schools are closed at the moment. Um, but he's reading on a second grade level. He is so smart and he's got so much energy. I remember when he was actively hooked up to chemo, he'd be jumping up and down in his hospital crib, just giggling like, like nothing was wrong. And he might be sick later from the chemo, but he was totally fine and happy during all of it. And he was that way the entire time. And I think his joy and his bravery kept us strong throughout all of that. And in fact, we called his journey Jeremy Strong because he just was so courageous through all of it. We might have been breaking down and hurting so much, but he didn't know anything was wrong. This was his new normal, and this was what he was going to go through with us. Um, in November 2018, we actually went on Jeremy's Make-A-Wish trip. He wished to go to Mickey's house, and so that is where we went. We went to Disney World, and we had a really, really great trip. Um, the only thing I'll say now is that the fear that settles in your stomach after a doctor says the word cancer to you, especially about your child, that never ever goes away. Um, we constantly live in fear of recurrence or any other issues. We actually now have a, a two-year-old, Jeremy's little brother, Miles, um, and anytime anything looks remotely wrong with either one of them, whether it's just a fever or I might imagine that their bellies look big, we immediately go into a panic, you know, is this cancer again? It's, it's scary. And that, that fear of cancer never ever goes away. We are part of this club of people that's terrible. It's a terrible club to be in, but it's, 
it's what we're a part of now. We're never going to go back to normal. Um, the day before Jeremy's diagnosis, or actually a few days before Jeremy's diagnosis, we didn't know anything was wrong. Our world was completely normal. We were not cancer parents. And now we've gone through it and we are cancer parents. Um, and we're just, we're so thankful that things turn out the way they have. He's been in remission and he's now part of what they call the Survivors Club. And he entered that last year at Levine Children's Hospital in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, but I'll show you the difference between Jeremy early 2016 with his feeding tube and his little bald head versus August 2016 after his cancer was gone and he was healed. I mean, smiling through all of it, such a joyful little boy and so happy. That never ever changed and it still hasn't. He's, he's the strongest person I've ever met and I'm so proud of him, he's my superhero. And then I'll show you one last photo. This is Jeremy now. This was actually just taken a couple of months ago with his little brother, Miles, and they are each other's best friend. They are just the light of my life, and I'm so proud of both of them. And that's my story. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>